Good morning. He is risen. They got it, Pastor Gary. The first creed of the church, and we have remembered it. He is risen indeed. Welcome to the second Easter service of 2018. You're scratching your head. What are you talking about? We are an Easter people, and we don't just celebrate Easter on Easter Sunday, but every day. So welcome to Morton. Welcome to our service today. We're so glad that you are here, and we have a service of remembrance as we celebrate Holy Communion today, and we continue on in the spirit of resurrection that we live in. We live and serve a God who is alive. Amen? Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Some quick announcements as we begin our service this morning. The Every Daughter Brunch is coming up, and today we want to make sure all the registrations are in. So ladies, it's time to register, and this is your last invitation to do so. That will be on April 14th. It'll be a wonderful Saturday luncheon, so please sign up for that. And the Adults Night Out is following that on the 21st, and you can sign up for that uh, on Eric's door on the way out on this side. This little book in my hand has many beautiful faces in it. This is our new pictorial directory. And you can pick this up on your way out in the gymnasium. There's three tables with letters of the alphabet for your last name above them. We've divided all of our uh, congregation for directories into three sections. So look for your letter, and then you can pick up your directory. And it's not only in book form, but it's also on online. It's a, it's a mobile form of a directory. So you can log in on your computer at home and see the directory and all the information on your computer as well as your phone. And you can make that a little quick access link on your phone and you can access the directory wherever you are to connect with people in our church. And it's wonderful. If you have any questions, you can contact myself or Joanne or our church office and we will walk you through any steps. But when you pick up your directory, there's a little piece of paper with instructions on how to get it online as well. And another great thing about our directories this time, we can update them annually for the next four years. If you missed having your picture taken and put in here, if you don't quite like your smile in this particular directory, as long as we have 15 to 20 people sign up and sit for a a picture-taking session, they will come back and reprint the whole thing for us one time a year. So we can add to it for the next four years, and then the mobile directory stays current. For all the current information, every time anybody moves or changes an email or a phone number, that would be the most current. So very exciting. We've waited a long time, and we're very happy to have these directories in our hands. And so pick yours up after the service. We have a great service planned for you today. Let us be in an attitude of worship and prepare to hear the word of the Lord this morning. Let us continue our Easter celebration by standing together and singing, Easter people, raise your voices.
Will you please join together in an affirmation of faith about serving Jesus? Hear these texts as we read them together. Jesus went throughout Galilee. News about him spread all over Syria. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. Let's take a moment and welcome those nearby, pass the peace of Christ to one another. Okay, you're having too much fun. I, before, we're going to receive our offering here just in a moment, and I want to, want to uh, share with you some good news and say thank you. Last month in, in, um, in March, we received the, uh, used to be called the One Great Hour of Sharing. It's an UMCOR offering, our United Methodist Com- uh, Commission on Relief. And I want to say thank you as our church uh, collected $2,835 for that mission outreach endeavor. Secondly, I want to say thank you for last Sunday's Easter offering, special offering that we took on behalf of uh, our annual conference initiative, Our Conference, Our Kids. And I want to say thank you for uh, raising $3,483 for that. So God has been very good in that sense, and I thank you for your generous hearts for doing this kingdom work like that. So I invite the ushers to come forward as we receive our tithes, gifts, and offerings, and our choir uh, leads us in worship.
says, right, we get to give praise and honor and glory to your name. And one way we want to honor you is through these gifts that we bring to your, for your, for your kingdom's work. Bless them, honor them, and multiply them for, for good. And Lord, may we be your, your servants. May we be your servants today and tomorrow and the next day. Amen. You may be seated. I was leaving. <laughs> Let us prepare our hearts for prayer by singing verses 1 and 3 of Abide With Me. ask the technology team to leave that last verse up for us if they would. I think that could be a centering prayer for us today as we come to our time of prayer in our service. There's a lot going on in our world and we respond by the grace of God through the grace of God. So we are in prayer in this resurrected life, this resurrected faith that doesn't make sense to the world, but it makes sense through Jesus. So as we come today to sing our praises and to offer up our prayers, I do want to remind the church at large at 1 o'clock today at Brandonwood, there will be a hymn sing that you can join in. And at 2.30, there will be another hymn sing at Hollybrook as we share that peace and that grace with our brothers and sisters who are in those locations. We want to be in prayer for... Many this morning, Doris Birchinoff continues to be in the hospital. She was released to Riverview, and they found something they wanted to check out, so they're continuing to diagnose her and treat her for symptoms that she's having. Marcella Rowland and Clark Burse uh, also uh, in the hospital, and then uh, Clark has been released. We continue to be in prayer for Imo Rich and Gary Drummond, who both have uh, been in the hospital getting different procedures done, and they need our prayers for recovery. Pastor Gary's father, Don Feldman, at Restmore needs our prayers as he is having some uh, physical complications that they are addressing and uh, needs our uh, special prayers for his healing and well-being. These flowers given in the glory of God in honor and memory of uh, Tom and Barb Sirens, uh, Barb's late mother, Martha, and they're just a beautiful, beautiful expression of God's presence with us, the glory of the flowers. And we know that the flower's glory fades as ours does, but God's glory does not fade. And we remember that this morning. Would you pray with me? We need your presence every hour, Lord. What by thy grace can foil the tempter's power 
who like thyself my guide and stay is our shining light through every hour. Lord, we pray that you would abide with us as we come into your presence, as we remember Christ and the sacrifice that he offered on the cross. We remember your power bringing him out of the grave. We don't quite understand it. It's almost hard to believe, too good to be true, and yet it is. And we hold on to that through faith with everything we have, remembering your goodness, remembering that you are the authority, that you are the creator, sustainer, redeemer, and friend of all. We come in the name of Christ this morning to remember those who seek you, who need you, who don't know you, who need your miraculous presence to be at work in their lives. We pray for peace and healing and restoration for those who are in the hospital, that in that place outside of their comfort zone, you would be their comforter. We thank you for the doctors and nurses and aides and all those who provide care to the best of human ability. But we ask your spirit to do your work, Lord, to heal, to fix, to redeem the cells, and to make the body work again for your glory. We always pray for your will and not our own. So help us when your will doesn't match our hopes and our expectations, our dreams. Help us to live in your power. As we remember the power over death, the power over the grave, help us to remember that that same power helps us to overcome the temptations that seek to destroy us to make us in someone else's image and not yours. That call us to step in a direction that isn't that of a servant. In the direction that is not loving one another. Lord, we ask for your wisdom and grace in our lives as we seek to be disciples, as we seek to be followers of Jesus as we seek to live in life with your joy filling us to overflowing. So many of the burdens of this world weigh us down and we get lost in the muck and mire and we forget we can't hear your voice. Lord, we come this morning to hear your voice. We come to hear your word. We come to be encouraged by being in your presence and to be changed and sent out. Lord Jesus, thank you for all that you have done and continue to do as you pray for us and have sent your spirit to empower us and guide us. Lord, send comfort to those who need it. And Lord, we ask for your grace in our lives as we remember that we are unholy We are not righteous. We need you, Jesus, to redeem us so that we can be in the presence of your Father. Hear us as we are reminded by your Spirit of the sin that separates us from you, that separates us from each other. Reveal it to us so that we can receive your grace in it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hear us as we pray together, Lord, the prayer that you taught your disciples as we seek your kingdom on this earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time we're going to receive Holy Communion at the invitation of our Lord. He's invited us to uh, a table, so to speak, and to experience what he has to offer for us in this wonderful experience. I do want to say that uh, you don't have to be a member of our church in order to receive communion. This is uh, open to those who desire the things of God and want uh, more of Jesus in your life. This is a means of grace, Wesley would say, and we say a means of God's grace for your life today. So uh, embrace that and experience that. Hear these words. When Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, he took bread and he shared it among them. And as he broke that bread and passed it amongst them, he reminded them that, uh, he said, this is my body, which is being given for you. And we never want to forget, always want to remember that he has done this for us and on our behalf. Later in that meal, he took a cup and he said, this cup is the cup of a new covenant. He said, this cup represents my blood, which is poured out for the full remission of sin. And we give thanks to God for that. We'd never want to forget what Jesus endured on our behalf, dying for our sin on a cross. And so uh, I want to pray that the Lord would consecrate these elements, simple elements of bread and juice, so that they would become for us His body and His blood, and that we too would be His faithful servants. So let, let's pray together, please. Lord, I'd ask that Your, your Spirit would uh, move among us, Minister to us and make these simple elements of bread and juice, they would become for us your body and blood and that we would understand in a personal way the depths of your love for us as represented by the bread and juice and that we would be your servants today and always in the name of Christ. Amen. I'd ask if the ushers would come forward, please.
body of Christ given for us. blood of Christ given for us, receive in faith as provisions for your life. As uh, the ushers are collecting communion cups, I'm going to invite Eric Hansen and Marge Orth to come up. They're going to share um, testimonies of their recent mission trip to Juarez. So, welcome. Come on up. Did great the first service. Uh-oh. So who's going to go first this time? All right. Eric's going to go first. Thing. It worked the first time, so. Got it. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I, I have some notes here, and hopefully that keeps us on track, and um, and it makes some sense, maybe, right? So, so this is the second year we, we've done this trip. Uh, it's, it's Operation Hogar. And it, uh, so we traveled to El Paso and then went to cross the border into Juarez and <clears throat> some of the logistics you've probably already heard about, the trip and, and things like that. So uh, we talked about it last year a little bit too. But <clears throat> So I went on this trip because I knew I could I, I have some experience with construction and um, grew up working hard and doing things like that. So I, I knew I could go and, and help at least one family um, find a house and, and, and live in a house and put a roof over their head. But this really isn't just a, I, 
I guess the way I think of it, it's not just a habitat for humanity in, um, in Mexico. It's a mission of the United Methodist Church. And one of the things we, had to, we, we do is um, there's a, um, a mission agreement, I think is what it's called, and, and um, that agreement has 10 statements on it. And as you can imagine, the recurring theme of that agreement is that we're going as servants of Jesus. And to be totally honest, that makes me a little uncomfortable. Well, that makes me a lot uncomfortable. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, can, I know I can go and do the work and I can be helpful, but you know, being a servant of Jesus, that's an that's a ominous concept. Um, so rather than talking about what we did and you know, building and the crazy conditions that these people live in, maybe I, I could talk a little bit about the people we met and the people we worked with. And um, there's plenty of needy families there. There's, there's no end to that. And, and this mission, it's, it's probably making us, well, I know, it's making a very small dent in a very big problem. But for those people that we helped, those people that now have a roof over their head and four walls that they can call home, it makes all the difference in the world. So that's why we, that's, we take comfort in that. I mean, that's, that feels good. So before ever going on this trip last year and and again this year, I I was wondering, you know, I wonder what the Mexican people think of us as as we come into their community and and what's their thoughts as to what our motivation is and how would they receive us. And I kind of figured that they just think we're probably just a bunch of rich gringos coming down to Mexico to work for a few days and then go home and feel good about ourselves. And so it... Last year we we did we did that we went down there and worked and 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 did some good things and came home and yeah we probably felt a little good about ourselves so this year we uh, expected the same thing and and we did and um, so as the week progressed this this year it was a little different situation there was more houses around where we were, we were building and it was just a little bit better situation the 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 family we were building for it was um, the, the husband was one of three brothers and his brother had a house nearby and there's lots of kids running around and and I had a I have a couple stories um, it relates to their kids I got the sense that they they were really starting to trust us because they they trusted us with their children their kids and that was kind of surprising to me <laughs> so um at one point it was a second day maybe I was sitting there with with some of the Mexican guys and they were working on some tools, trying to repair some tools. Their tools are um, in not best working condition. So they're, they're trying to make some repairs. And a lot of the group went off on a walk. And a bunch of the little kids were running around. And they came up and they, they, they saw the guys sitting there. And they said, hey, you know, in Spanish, of course, uh, where'd the gringos go is basically what they asked. And I didn't understand them. I heard the word gringos and I kind of perked up. And then they saw me. And I could see a little embarrassment on the little boy's face. You know, he's like, "Ooh, <laughs> there's one of them." <laughs> but, uh, but I, but I realized why they, he was asking. He was actually concerned about where these goofy gringos were going and that they might get hurt or lost or, or something like that. And I was like, "Hmm, that, that's interesting." And then the next day, there was um, we we had a little bit of uh, about a half hour break or whatever, and we we just, few of us. Decided to climb up the above the you know the mountain up, up the hill. There's a plateau at the top above these houses. Climbed up there, and a bunch of the kids tagged along, and went with us, and they're anywhere from I don't know two years old up to ten, twelve years old. I mean, they're every shape, size in between. And and we get up there to the top, and we hear one of the moms yelling, calling for the little boy, and his name was Brian. He was like a little two year old. He lived in the house next door. And they get these American names too. It's kind of interesting, Brian. And we, you know, kind of, you hear that. And then, so we waved, we're up here. And then a couple of the other kids yelled, yeah, he's up there with them. And, and she seemed okay with that. That was kind of like, hmm. I mean, I wouldn't let my little two-year-old <laughs> go off with some strangers to the top of a plateau. But anyway, that, and then we went down. Brian's older sister, she was probably about, what, six? I don't know. She was trying to carry Brian down the hill and, and she was struggling. I mean, it was a mountain. I mean, it's rocks gravel everywhere so she was struggling and anyway I, I ended up carrying brian down the hill and that was kind of cool he, he he lit up and said hey you're not so bad either way either so so um so then in addition to that at the, at the job site there's a there's a guy and i'll try to wrap it up quickly there's a there's a um a man in charge at the job site he's actually his title is he's the maestro 
And uh, so he's, he's the kind of the pro in charge of making sure this house gets built. And, and there's four, four walls and a roof and a door and a window. And, and last year we had, you know, Manny was the guy that was the maestro on the site. And Manny doesn't speak a word, word of English. Maybe one, two, I don't know, but uh, very few. And, and my C grades in high school Spanish didn't help much either. And um, so, so we didn't, you know, we had that whole communication thing going on. But um, so, and, and last year, the, we, it just wasn't as good a condition. The house was, the site wasn't as good. The, anyway, we, so we all left and we, we got the house built and we left and um, we all wish we, you know, things might have gone a little bit better. Maybe the house is a little more close to square or whatever. But anyway, it, it was, it's still standing. We went back and looked and it looked, they made improvements. So that was good news. Um, so then this year, Manny was the maestro on the job again this year, and it was just kind of, oh, boy, there's Manny, yeah, hola. <laughs> and, uh, and so he recognized us. I figured that out pretty quick, too. And um, so we worked on the, on, the, on the site again this year, and, and it kind of took me back a little bit. It reminded me a little bit of my work, uh, my dad. And uh, dad, you know, we, he, he had us kids working side by side with him all the time on projects, and, and we learned a lot from him. We learned Basically, don't be afraid of anything. You can drop, you can do anything. You just have to work hard to, to get it done, and that came in handy on this trip, obviously. But Dad also said, as a when I was an adult at one point, he said some. Um, he said to me, we we're uh, you know I was over at the house helping, and he, he took on big projects too. It wasn't just little things; it was big stuff. And he said, you know, the thing I work I enjoy the most is just working with you three boys. You know, we work side by side and stuff. We don't have to talk a lot, but. It's just something special about accomplishing something and, and getting something done, you know. And I remember that. And um, so anyway, we're on this trip down there, and I realized, you know what? Working with Manny's, that kind of makes sense. We can't communicate very well, but we're doing something really special here, and, and we got something accomplished. And so that, that was, that was I, took, I took heart in that, and that kind of got, it made it kind of personal for me pretty quickly when, I, when that started to sink in. So in summary, I guess, you know, that, that apprehension about going and being a servant of Jesus, um, you know, I went, to, I went to do the work, but in reality, we, we were servants of Jesus, and, you know, we didn't have to talk about it a lot and, and say a lot of words, but it's, it's really kind of simple, <laughs> just to go and love your neighbor, and that's what we did. So that's all I have. Thanks. Amen. Thank you, Eric. All right, Marge, she's okay. going to share from her perspective, testimony and, of this And I church. think Pastor Gary found out the first service that he's going to have to cut his sermon short <laughs> because of our lengthy testimony. <laughs> Two years ago, I heard about Juarez, and it was here, and I was sitting in the congregation, and after I... Uh, listened to what was said, I thought, hmm, you know, that's something that I might be interested in doing. And it was just a passing, fleeting thought. And I didn't think anything more of it. And then there was this informational meeting that uh, was going to be held. And the closer the date came, the stronger my desire was to go find out more about the Juarez trip. So I thought, well, I hadn't made a decision yet or anything. I'd just go to the meeting and um, listen to what was said. So I did, and after the meeting, I thought, you know what? I think I can do this, and I think I would like to do this. And for me, I did decide to go, and for me, that is a great um, encourage. Well, I was... It, it took courage, is what I'm trying to say. It took courage for me to decide to go on this trip because I am one that I love my comfort zone. I get in the comfort zone, and I don't want to get out of it. And this was definitely going to be an experience that I'm going to be uh, getting out of my comfort zone. And so I decided to go, and it was the best uh, decision I made. It was beyond my expectation uh, the whole experience was awesome, and I was very blessed. So I would like to say that this trip, I give God all the glory, all the glory. He's the one that was by our side every single minute of every single day. 
He was there when we flew in to the windy, turbulent El Paso airport. And I am not one of uh, not good flyers. So, and and God was there <clears throat> when we had to cross the border. You just never know what may happen at the border. No problems whatsoever. We got over and we got back safe and sound. No problems whatsoever. God was there when we went to the work site and we worked alongside the Mexicans and we communicated as well as we could. I have no Spanish background whatsoever, but we communicated. And we, if there were any problems, they were taken care of. Uh, language was not a barrier. God was there. Uh, days that I felt like giving up. Uh, there is some physical work to be done. I wanted to give up, but God said, no, Marge, you continue on. And I did. I carried on. God was there when we were at our team house, and we needed to be in before dark. And we were there all evening, and we had a great time and uh, got closer to one another. God was there with our devotions in the evening that Amy had prepared for us. His presence was there at all time, every minute of the day. And God was there when we dedicated the house. The house, they had no uh, protection, no uh, shelter whatsoever. This young family of three small children and this young couple, God was there when we dedicated it and gave them the keys to their house. Uh, I would like to thank everybody here who supported us in prayer, donations, and encouraging words. It meant a lot to our team, a lot. We had special personal prayer partners that would send us messages every day. Uh, they would uh, scripture, prayer, encouraging words. But it was something we looked forward to. It got us through the day. And I especially like to uh, thank Gary, Pastor Gary for his support. He also was one of those who uh, get, uh, sent us scripture and prayer and encouraging words. And it seemed like his, his message every day seemed to fit somewhere along the way during the day. It, it encouraged us. It was, it was great. Um, so, in closing, uh, <laughs> I would like to say that if you out there are thinking, hmm, this is something that I might like to do, follow that little voice in your head. That I, I really, truly believe that's God saying, go. You can do this. Get out of your comfort zone. You can do this. And in closing, I took something that Kristen, one of our group, uh, uh, persons in our uh, mission group, she had posted on Facebook, <clears throat> and it is just so, um, what am I trying to say? It is uh, what our mission is all about. And it comes from Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Amen. Thank you. Before you sit down, don't exit too fast. <laughs> Uh, their testimonies and the previous ones that we've heard as well all tie into this theme of serving Jesus, which we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks. And it's really important. Um, as, as, you, as you heard them share, you know, Eric said, you know, thinking about being a servant of Jesus, that can be kind of, you can be apprehensive about that. And uh, we feel that sometimes, don't we? 
And then, but see, now the experience, because they've done this, the next time, it doesn't feel that way as much. And it just, <clears throat> the, and that's, that's the grace of God working in and through them. And then Marge made the comment about, uh, you know, listening to the voice, that prompt, those promptings that we have, those are, those are important. That's the Holy Spirit nudging us and moving us to do the work that he's calling us to do. So thank you for your witness. Thank you for your testimony. Appreciate it very much. I want to pray a blessing over this. Lord, thank you <clears throat> that we can hear and now help us in our hearing to obey and follow and trust you. Thank you for these uh, faithful ones uh, to, to share their, uh, their witness and your blessings upon uh, Eric and Marge. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. Um, Maybe I should have kept those two up here for, but I need, I need some volunteers. Anybody here want to play a little game with me? Pastor Gabe did this for the children's message for the first service, and it was excellent, and it ties into everything here. So um, I need about five or six people. If you would go, let's, let's go, let's go over here. Come on. Somebody. Here we go. That'll work. A couple more. Some brave souls. Brave, brave, brave. 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 Thank Bless you. Bless you. Mike, come on. Now, you're all familiar with the game. You love games, Mike. Come on. Uh, thank you, Eric. Here we go. Here Red we go. light, green light. <laughs> so I stand here and I, I call off. Re- I'm going to put yellow in there, too. Caution. And then we'll see, we'll see what they do. So if I say green, that means they move. If I say red, that means they stop. Are they doing anything over there yet? If I say yellow, they're going to be cautious. So red light. I heard something. <laughs> green light. Red light. They're good. Yellow light. They're looking both ways. Are they being very cautious? Red light. Green light, red light, red light. Marge, you're just kind of... Green light, come on in. Way to go, way to go, way to go. Perfect. Thank, give, give everybody a hand. Thank you for being our models for green light. So we're going we're gonna to talk about serving like Jesus. And the text... I want to read from is called the Great Commission, and this was the last words. Last words are important, and we have some different texts that we can look to as words that were from Jesus that were at the end of his well, his, his last words on the cross. Remember, if those were, "It is finished." And then before his ascension into heaven, Acts 1.8 tells us about you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and uh, Samaria and the ends of the, wor- ends of the earth. And then these words are the words that Matthew records as Jesus' last text in the Gospel of Matthew. And this happens sometime before the ascension. So... These are important words. Last words are important. And in fact, if you would go to the next, next slide, I think it's a picture. That's go. And the next one is, this is a picture of uh, John Wesley with the white hair. And in the boat up at the front is Thomas Coke. And this is when Wesley in, sent Coke from England over to America to... Um, establish the Methodist Episcopal Church. And this is a famous painting by uh, Kenneth Wyatt, and it's titled, the saying is, Coke makes the statement to Wesley, you know, what, what, what do you want me to do? Or 
well, you know, this is, this, is, this, is the, this is it. This is the adventure. In fact, these are the last words Coke heard from Wesley. And Wesley said, offer them Christ. Offer them Christ. Those are the parting words Wesley gave in the, in the uh, sending forth to America uh, the establishment of who we are today. So that's part of our spiritual DNA, to offer people Christ. So with that in mind, here are these last words from Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, because I have this authority, he then says what he's about to say. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That is the Great Commission. That is what we have been called to do. And that is, um, those are last words for us. If you'd move ahead to the slide that says last words, I'm kind of jumping forward here because I, 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 I don't have a lot of time. So I want to get through this. So these words are important. They're very important for us. And we're going we're gonna to try to figure out what this means and what, that, what a difference it can make for us as we want to serve like Jesus. Will you please pray with me? Lord, I ask that these these words will come off the pages of, of Scripture, off, off, off this, our Bible, and go deep into our heart and into our mind and become part of who we are and help us as we um, consider how we're to serve, that we would be faithful and trust you and know that you can bring about all this good stuff in our life for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, All authority. All authority, Jesus said, has been given to me. All authority. God raised his son up out of the grave. The The same resurrection power that brought Jesus from death to life is ours today. We are Easter people. Wasn't that glorious last week? Just the, all of the wonderful stuff with the, the music and the extra brass. And we had, I did a display here. We went from darkness. We had black cloths uh, positioned around. And, and uh, the light of Christ came in. And we, the black was lifted and light, white was brought in. And, and we had, uh, you know, this transformation from death to life. It's a great reminder of that power of of God for us. But friends, that's just not one day of the week, one day of the year. That's every day. That's who we are in Christ. And Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. Therefore, because he says the authority has been given to me, I'm saying this to you and I'm going to give that authority to you. Every time Jesus sent his disciples out, he said, I have authority and I'm placing it in your hands to demonstrate who I am to the world around you. We have that. And we forget it. But we have it. It's important to to always remember that we have that. So we have all authority. And then there's four key words that I want to... uh, uh, Go to the next slide, please. Four key words. And they're verbal words. How many English majors do I have in my midst here this morning? Because I'm going to talk about participles and verbs. And you're going to go, oh, no. A a dangling participle. Okay, these four words, the first one is is go. The second word is disciple. The third word is baptize. And the fourth word is teach. Now, the interesting thing about this text is, is that there's one verb and three participles. 
And a participle is an I-N-G word, by the way. And baptizing is a participle. Teaching is a participle. And go, it should be going. Go, go, going is a participle. The verb is, we use a phrase in English, make disciples. The word really is this disciple. So if you could just say the word disciple and put an exclamation point at the end of it. So let's just say that word real loud. Disciple. One more time. Disciple. It's a command, actually. It's an imperative. It says, Jesus, I give you all this authority to disciple. And the, the participles are our actions that go along with with the, the, the discipling that we need to do. Disciple. This, you go right out here and look up on the wall. It says, we are to make disciples for Jesus Christ. Our mission is to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And this is where the text comes from, or that saying comes from for our, our mission statement. This text right here. Disciple. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. So really what what is going on here is, go to the word go, um, is this going. And I'm glad we played red light, green light. Because we got the green light, folks. We got the green light. The green light says go. And Jesus didn't have a red light there. He didn't even have a yellow light. But that's how we live it, don't we? You heard the testimony of Eric and Marge. And when, when, when Eric shared about that, you know, we can be apprehensive. That's, our, that's when we, we want to get in yellow light mode and red light mode. And we're like, boy, I don't know if I can do that. And Jesus is saying, green light. And we're like, I don't know. That red light makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. Marge talked about getting out of her comfort zone. We all have comfort zones, don't we? And we like our comfort zone. That's why they're called comfort zones. We go right to them. But the Lord is stretching us and wanting us to do things that take us outside that. And a trip to Juarez is outside that. And a trip to Juarez begins to change us. And be, we've had eight go this year. I forget how many went last year. Um, so eight, these people are changing us as we are part of that as well, by the way. So, um, so going, we got to go. Then we have uh, baptizing. What does that? What does that mean? Does that mean you're going to go up to somebody and say, "Let me, let me dunk you in some water"? I know you'd love to do that, or put water on top of their head, or what? But baptizing means we want to. We want people to come to faith in Christ. We want people to come to know Jesus in a personal relationship. And he says, we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We want the completeness of God in and through and on a person's life. We want people to know, know God as creator and Jesus as redeemer and the Holy Spirit as sustainer in our life. There's a story in Acts about Philip who was, who was sent by God to go uh, south out of, out of Jerusalem, and he encountered uh, uh, an Ethiopian eunuch. And this man was trying to figure out what Isaiah was r- writing and was, had written. And, and Philip came alongside of him and explained the text and presented the gospel. And the, this Ethiopian was converted to Jesus, and they found some water, and he got baptized. He came into faith. So Jesus is commanding us to present Offer Christ, just as John Wesley said to Thomas Koch, offer them Christ. Offer Jesus in everything we do. Offer Jesus. And then uh, teaching. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say it two different ways, and you tell me the difference. And teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. That's what, I'm going to say it again. And teaching them all that I've commanded you. Did you catch what I left out? Two words. What are they? To obey. That's called the great omission. We've, this is the great commission, but when we take out the words obey, we've made it a great omission. And so Jesus is asking us, not asking us, he's telling us, 
He's commanding us to make disciples, to disciple. And one of the other aspects of that, as we go, it's a movement aspect of us. It's a baptizing aspect for us. It's also a teaching aspect. We need to teach and explain the gospel. We need to teach and explain the reality of who this Jesus is. Now, we also need to not only be teaching, but we need to be teachable. We need to be teachable into understanding this. Now, this isn't just mere knowledge of information, which can be good in and of itself, but that's not the end game here. The end game is life in Christ and living the life that Jesus offers us. And we only do that by obeying. If we don't obey, we're not going to live the life Jesus wants us to live. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be miserable in Jesus. Is that what the hymn says? It doesn't say that. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus or blessed in Jesus. But to trust and obey. So those are these four key words, go, baptize, teach. But the verb is it. The verb that controls it all is, say it with me, disciple, exclamation point, right? Now, I got to ask you real quickly here, how do we do this? And I, I propose we make disciples in these three words we've been looking at, and we'll be looking at them all year long. Love, we need to love the Lord our God with all our heart, strength, soul, and mind. We need to worship the Lord with passion in our heart and with desire in our heart to, to surrender all that we have to Him in worship and then to serve the Lord by serving others. Now, I, I'm going to just throw out some ideas here. What, what if as a church, what if as a church, we on a hot day got some cold water bottles and went to a location in town and handed them out at a stop, four-way stop or something and said, here, here's a bottle of water for you. Or go to a construction site and here's some water for you. And offer it in the name of Christ. Offer Christ in the midst of that water. What if we had uh, popcorn as another easy giveaway? We can pop up a bunch of popcorn, put it in a bag and take it to some, somewhere and, 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 and hand it out and say, because people inevitably say, why are you doing this? Why would you do this? And we respond by saying, I want to share, I'd just like to share the love of God in a simple way. That is putting feet to making relationship in peop, into people's lives for sharing the gospel. What if we had umbrellas on a rainy day, we go to a parking lot like Walmart or, or Kroger and help people get from the from the store to their car or vice versa with umbrellas. And they're going, why would you do something like that? I just want to offer God's love in a simple way today. It's a witness to Jesus. What if we, what if we found some restrooms around the area that were kind of messy and we, decided, we said, hey, uh, would you mind if I and another person came in here and cleaned up the bathroom for you? What do you think they'd say to that? Be a lot of blessing out of that if, if, if they let you do it. But think about that. Who wants to clean up, clean up the bathrooms? Usually the last thing that gets done. But if we went in there and did that, what a difference would that? Why, why in the world would you ever want to come and clean a bathroom? I just want to share the love of God in a very practical way. People, people would be blessed by that. School supplies, yard work. What about this? What if we had a business blast where we... We, we targeted a, a local business and we just went in one day with a, a box of goodies and said, here, this is for you, for you and your staff and, and um, there's whatever it might be. It might be donuts or it might be something else, some baked, baked goods. And we say, this is for you. Well, thank you. Uh, why, would, why, would, why would you want to do something like that? Well, we're just wanting to bless people and share the love of God in a, in a, in a, in a Practical way. And in that process, it's, it's shared with them this opportunity to experience the love of God in a very practical way. Now, the, the list is endless. We can come up with all kinds of ways to do this 
And, um, you know, you're in line at, at McDonald's and you, and you pay for the person behind you. When, you, when you're paying for yours, you, you ask, well, what's the person behind me, what that bill is, and you pay for it. And they'll go, why are you doing that? Well, there's a witness of the person who's, who's taking the money, and then you, when, when they tell the next person, they say, well, it's already been covered, you've got blessed two groups of people. But this is what we want to do. This is how we can serve Christ in simple ways. And this is the green light. Okay, I'm over, over time. I'm sorry, but we're going we're gonna to have our benedictions. So stand up. I'm done preaching. Because I've got to go next door and preach over there. So we're going to have a benediction. Sorry, Jane. And the benediction is very simple. This is the text we've just looked at. And it's not the red light, it's the green light. Go. Don't stop, go. Go and make disciples of all nations. That means every, every ethnic group in the world. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you and lo, I will be with you always. Marge said in her, her testimony, God was with us. How many times did she say that? All the time. And that's the promise of Jesus. He's with you. He's with me. God is with us to the end of the age. There's no stopping it. All right. So go. That's your benediction. Go. Go. Go.